Okay. So <clears throat> thank you for the invitation. And uh, <clears throat> this talk is quite close in spirit uh, to the very nice talk by Regina Buracek on generalized convexity. So it can be actually considered that a kind of a follow up uh, on this talk. As far as I <clears throat> get from your presentation, uh, the, just a second, uh, the general idea of, is to replace optimization problem here with uh, finding the value of conjugate function at zero. That means uh, at the zero or gradient space. And uh, that can be also converted to the problem of finding intersection of this vertical line with the epigraph of conjugate function. And uh, <coughs> By doing that, we obtain uh, optimal value according to this equality and uh, support plane at this point uh, give us uh, the uh, point in the primal space where we attain this uh, optimal. So, uh, and uh, we, uh, can imagine that we can start with a certain point that on the same vertical axis with zero and uh, some value, which is uh, in conjugate space, it is lower than this root, but in a primal space, it means that we take some initial point and the value of the objective at this point is greater than uh, this minus f of zero. And computationally, and this is what I'm actually going to talk mainly here, is to how you can get from this point to that one uh, in a kind of the lowest number of computations and the most in the most efficient way. Uh, so it is probably not a very new idea. Uh, it can be also traced back to my very earlier work uh, cited here, but I keep on <laughs> returning to this idea and uh, I'll try to say you what's and coming out of this recently. So uh, first, a uh, very simple idea is to uh, use just any separating plane, which separates our initial point and uh, epigraph. Uh, if this is a strict separation, then we anyway, we improve our initial solution and move into the direction of this intersection. Uh, it is probably not the most efficient way uh, to do, but uh, it has a great flexibility because um, there are many ways we can construct these separating planes and also, <clears throat> it allows us to use some kind of external uh, uh, approximation of epigraph. And if we separate our initial point from this expansion or uh, this outer approximation of epigraph, we separate also this two point of obviously and then we can move further to our decision. Well, the uh, simplest way, of course, to, is to approximate uh, uh, by some intersections of uh, half of half spaces. 
but half space in uh, uh, dual space uh, corresponds to just the function value uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of our objective function. So we probably will not even need gradients to do this uh, separation, to do this approximation and then separation. Also, <clears throat> it may be if we are not able to compute or is it to computational experience expensive to compute the objective function value that also can be um, described in terms of outer approximation of the epigraph. So uh, even if it is not that uh, efficient, uh, it doesn't look too efficient, but it may have some use. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, uh, we would like to move our separating plane uh, as close as possible to epigraph to raise it uh, as much as, as it possible. And then we come to the idea of supporting plane algorithms because the most you can move this plane is up to the moment when it starts to touch the epigraph and the <laughs> kind of um, <laughs> common way to uh, construct such supporting planes is to project uh, our point uh, in the dual space onto epigraph. <clears throat> it is not uh, okay. Uh, not without any uh, disadvantages uh, such um, approach because in this way we can uh, construct a, a supporting plane uh, at from all points on this axis except the solution point. Here we it makes no sense to project this point on the epigraph, it is already there. So the projection will give us no direction, no way to uh, find uh, the uh, primal variables. But we will talk about this uh, later. So, <clears throat> but uh, the projection problem by itself is kind of rather nice problem because it's uh, strictly convex uh, and it has a uh, objective function with uh, very nice gradients which are Lipschitz continuous and uh, uh, even Lipschitz constant is equal to one the projection operator is an, exp an expansion mm, so it may kind of we can use it uh, for in certain cases just for simple iteration methods. And as you can guess from this um, picture, you might have a rather fast convergence because uh, you see that our next um, approximation is quite close to the uh, to the root. And indeed, uh, if we look at some theory of this algorithm, it has quite um, interesting convergence properties. Uh, it, in any case, it doesn't matter which, uh, what is the function, it's just enough to, for, for this function to be convex, we don't need any Lipschitz continuity or, or anything, or strict convexity, etc., etc. It is a, a super linear conversion. Uh, if this function is above some quadratic uh, with the um, uh, origin, uh, 
at the solution point. Then uh, convergence is uh, just quadratic, it, like a Newton method, but but uh, <clears throat> it's even better than Newton method because it does not need uh, close uh, good initial position to start uh, quadratic convergence. It, it, it will convert, quadratically converge globally. And finally, if uh, this function has a, a sharp minimum, it means that the zero is internal point of the subdifferential set at the optimum, then convergence is just a finite. It doesn't matter if function is uh, linear or piecewise linear or piecewise quadratic or whatever. It is. Uh, it will converge uh, in a finite number of iterations. And it is uh, quite simple uh, uh, consequence of. Uh, mm, uh, uh, of the fact that if we have sharp minimum, then conjugate function at the vicinity of uh, solution is just a linear. So if you arrive at some at this vicinity, which is guaranteed by pre results above, then you immediately next iteration will give you exact solution. So that's mm, not that uh, surprising, actually. So, but for this algorithm to be implementable, we have to find some ways to project on the epigraph. And of course, we use, uh, for that, we may use uh, um, some internal approximation of this epigraph, which is based on some measurements of conjugate function and uh, at certain points. Well, it's equivalent actually to the computing of the primal function and its gradient, it's some net of uh, po points in a primal space. But <laughs> And then uh, if we, at certain stage, if we have one uh, such approximation, which is just a convex uh, envelope of certain uh, collection bundle, when we say bundle, if you like, uh, bundle methods uh, uh, of, <coughs> gradients and uh, values of uh, objective function of conjugate function, uh, then uh, it's kind of uh, very na natural is to follow in a way that you project uh, on your approximation, then you obtain this uh, support vector, which points you toward this approximation. Then you look at the uh, the support point uh, for the real uh, uh, for the epigraph as a whole. This is a quite uh, uh, <laughs> possible because uh, to get this point, we optimize uh, linear functional on the epigraph, and due to Fenchel Moreau famous result, it amounts to just computing the value of objective function and the gradient at this point. So it gives you this vertex. And then you add it to the your internal approximation and uh, continue. Then you take this point, you again project this point on a new approximation, obtain support vector, which probably goes like this. And then you see where uh, 
the actual support is on the epigraph will be somewhere here probably and you add it to the envelope and uh, you you're getting closer and closer to 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 the um, projection like to the actual projection not to the optimal point but to the projection of our initial approximation on on the epigraph of course it takes uh, time it takes some um, iterations but uh, it looks like that it pays off just uh, sit and uh, wait until we have a good projection uh, instead of kind of rushing up uh, <laughs> using some uh, intermediate uh, improvements in, in, a, in this solution. Uh, so, uh, for, of course, uh, for, to solve this uh, projection on the polytope, we need some algorithms, but uh, this is a very kind of a special case of quadratic programming and uh, it, uh, the <clears throat> finding the least distance can be very <clears throat> much simplified uh, uh, for this purpose. Uh, we, for a number of years, we uh, polished a certain uh, implementation of this uh, routine uh, for projection on polytop. It's kind of uh, now quite stable and efficient. And uh, it, it is interesting also that it can be used for many other uh, problems. Um, for instance, uh, uh, solving the least distance problem for the polyhedron, which is given as a set of inequalities or equalities, it doesn't matter. It can be converted to the problem of finding the point in a certain polytop. Of course, there is Crane Milman uh, theorem saying that, okay, if it's bounded, it's anyway the polytop and uh, uh, can be described in a convex uh, envelope of this of its extreme points but the, the <laughs> some kind of straightforward approach immediately leads to exponential numbers of uh, this uh, uh, point in in a certain if we just describe, uh, this polyhedron as a current combination of this, of its extreme point. Uh, but uh, in a certain uh, way, we can convert this problem to the problem of projecting a certain special point on a convex uh, polyhedral cone, uh, and then uh, cut it, cut this in a way that uh, we have some finite uh, polytop, a bounded polytop. And the number of uh, generators in this cone and numbers, and consequently the number of extreme points in this polytop is not larger than the number of constraints here. Oh, okay, just plus one. So we don't have any exponentiality uh, in number of extreme points. And so this problem is uh, relatively easy to solve. Uh, what can be said about the complexity? We, did some extensive testing of this subroutine and actually it uh, uh, demonstrates uh, basically quadratic dependence on the problem size. 
Well, somehow my uh, tech uh, distribution missed some uh, fonts, so the numbers uh, and the titles on the axis uh, were missing, but I can assure you that there is something like 3,000 uh, variables and, and 3,000 uh, rows of the, about the same order or uh, half of that or something like that. Uh, and uh, these are dense matrices, so it's computationally quite uh, sufficiently uh, difficult problem to um, uh, be uh, sure that the results are quite reliable. And also we used quite degenerate uh, data sets, uh, which are based on the Philip Wolf uh, uh, test of points, and test, uh, which are kind of a pancake, which are flat and thin and are quite close to zero. Uh, but as a specific of high dimensions is that the points are basically on the, on the boundary of high dimensional sets. So the zero uh, can be obtained just by combining these points which are quite far away. So it, it is a really good testing problem. Uh, so uh, what we <laughs> met in practice, we, uh, we immediately uh, met with some computational problems, which are quite uh, very interesting. For instance, uh, first of all, uh, your <clears throat> approximation may look like follows, and uh, you're, uh, you were somewhere here. And when you project and uh, support, you jump to, to this point. Uh, and then you project it on a, your approximation, and you have nonsense because this vector has a negative, has a positive uh, coordinate along this axis, and uh, the support will take you to the infinity. So it uh, makes no sense. So to overcome this difficulty, we had to add uh, some upper approximation for the uh, objective value. No, well, in actually uh, lower estimate because this F0, F conjugate at zero, it's a minus extreme value, maximum, minimal value. So if you go up, it means that you have a lower estimate for the minimum. Lower estimate, of course, is, is not quite the thing which is maybe rather difficult to obtain, but we can use some kind of adaptive strategy. We try someone, if it's too low, it will show up somewhere in a situation like this, and then you just double it or something like that. Mm. So it's, but uh, it uh, showed another uh, problem with uh, real implementations and real to this practical computations, uh, which is, um, can be shown on the next uh, uh, slides. Well, we, we, we take, uh, for instance, very simple, uh, piecewise quadratic function. Well, these uh, functions, which are max of quadratics, are rather unpleasant from the point of view of uh, non-differentiable 
optimization because their subdifferential sets are often, or as a rule, they are degenerate. They, are, they, are, they have no interior. In certain direction, we have a smooth uh, behavior in certain subspace, and in, in an orthogonal subspace, we have kinks. So it was a, a study, this type of behavior it was studied by uh, Robert Mifflin and Claudia Sagastegat, uh, which is <laughs> who is taking part, as I saw it in, in this um, conference, and they produced these well known uh, UV algorithms, uh, which are tailored basically, I think, uh, for handling these uh, cases. Uh, and, but uh, what we uh, saw when we run this uh, uh, algorithm for uh, this simple problem, uh, I'm sorry, somehow it is, it doesn't, pardon, uh, it doesn't show, oh. Uh, the full screen, I don't know what to do. I cannot move it. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, you, you, you may see that uh, we, it is shown here how the objective value depends on the so-called major iterations. Uh, and the major iteration is the following that we sit at certain point, wait till we get good accuracy in projection, and then we support and uh, go to the next point. And this theory uh, is that we will observe then quadratic convergence, at least. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, due to logarithmic a scale on the difference between objective values and the optimal, we see the real, the negative quadratic behavior of, of our objective. So it goes uh, 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 without, uh, in accordance with the theory, which is uh, nice. <laughs> of course nice but if you look at the uh, details uh, what is the cost of getting these points on this nice quadratic uh, slope uh, then we see very interesting uh, picture uh, uh, the color code. We, we have one minute left for the. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 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 I cut down my slides today, uh, but yeah. just, uh, just a second then. Uh, uh, we see here the number of internal iterations for projection, for computing projection on the first, second, third, and fourth, and five fifth major iteration. The final stage, when we are actually quite close to the optimal, it starts doing some nonsense. It's going to some wild uh, primal point with the objective values in the millions. And then, uh, fortunately, it goes down quite fast, geometrically, actually. And uh, the total number of, of course, is not that uh, high, 25. And uh, <clears throat> that, but of course, we would like to, to get rid of this uh, high uh, unpleasant part of this computation. And the next idea is to uh, introduce additional cuts. Uh, we may, in the simplest way, we can cut off the upper part of the epigraph and add uh, some new constraint, I say, 
of our, which bounds our uh, support to, to this area below this value. And it amounts to some one dimensional optimization problem for kind of a non obvious objective here. And then, uh, of course, you see that uh, if you, you know, compute the support over the whole epigraph, you obtain a point like this. Oh, I see. <laughs> and uh, if you cut off, uh, you obtain the uh, support at this point, and you are getting quite closer to it. So uh, that's a kind of very, there are many interesting directions to go for this type of algorithms. And I hope I will have chance to talk about that on the, another your seminars and things like that. Thank you for attention and sorry if I took too much time. Uh, so thank you very much for your talk. If either anyone that desire to ask any question to our speaker. Uh, Hoa, can I ask a quick question? Yes. yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Evgeny, for a very nice talk. I uh, just wanted to ask you, um, do you really need the original uh, function to be convex for this uh, method to be well defined? No, of course not. Uh, that is very, I, I was very much impressed with your ideas because uh, instead of just uh, linear supports, we can use kind of a concave uh, supports and handle yes. just this generalized convexity that you were talking about. Of course, uh, it is. Uh, Maybe we could we have to use this internal approximations kind of uh, putting together polytops uh, like a union of uh, convex hulls, but it's uh, there's nothing uh, uh, that would be very interesting to try uh, and to solve a kind of. Uh, projection problem over this uh, collection of polytops. And then we can go like you, uh, basically like the, the same, in the, within the same framework. And did I okay. answer? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your great talk. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, talk.